All right, Dan's an Ipswich fan. All right, Dan? Dan. You got Jamie? All How right. are you, Dan? You all right? Hey, boy. Not so bad, mate. It's where to get a left star and this and Duff's estate. It's absolute bedlam, but yeah. Well done. Got yourself a point. What, what a night, yeah. What a great result. We say we never, we fight to the end. We never give up. Uh, we've got 18 points now for losing positions now this season, which is Good. absolutely ridiculous. Mm. Three defeats, and I think it's, it's been a hell of a season. And hopefully, come what may, we'll be in the picture for all that promotion if not playoffs. <laughs> I mean, you say you've only got three defeats, which is unbelievable, really. But mm. it it feels like you've let it slip a little bit. Southampton and Leeds have... Or is it just because they've been really good and they've caught up with you? I, I, I don't know. Because it, it, it seemed like Leicester and, and Ipswich were running away with it at the start. We were. Obviously, we had a hard sort of run around Christmas time. We had the Norwich game. We had the Leeds, Leicester. Um, we obviously lost George Hurst as well at Christmas as well to injury against Leicester. And we do look a bit lost at times at top. We're not the sort of same sort of team as we were, but hope we can get a striker in and sort of carry the push. But it's been a mental, it's been an absolute unreal sort of 12 months where we were sort of yeah. last February when we were like 10 points behind Shiver Wednesday. We come back in Bristol Rovers, think our seasons we're going to the playoffs, and we chased them down and get second, and obviously went for the, the tight in the end. We just fell short, but got 99 points, 100 goals. Is and say what? Well, it's just been it's been unreal since McKenna's come in. Really, to be honest, yeah, he's done, done, a, great, he's done an incredible job. He has done a great job. Where they were, yeah. where they where they're on the cusp of being, there's still a long way to go, obviously. Mm. But to be in yeah. an automatic place at this stage of the season now, mm. they're, they're they're in the mix for a reason. Mm. He, he, exactly. he, listen, uh, this is no fluke with Kieran McKenna. You know, right. he, he's been doing this for a long time. People might not know this. But he started at Tottenham doing his coaching badges. Man United went after him. They look. They mm. they wanted him, and they brought him in at Manchester United. Yeah. And within like he's with Oli, wasn't he? within a year, he was with Mourinho. Mm. Like his right hand man. So you know, this you're talking about a guy. He might look like he's young or you know inexperienced in the game, and he's finding his way. He he knows what he's doing. Apparently, like I know him. I speak to people that I know, and I was like, he's done bloody hell. He's done really well. And then when you yeah. hear about what he's done and his coaching session, apparently his coaching sessions are so good that the players have never seen the coaching sessions that he's putting on. Mm. That's the level you're talking about and how good he is. So this is this ain't a fluke. He, he, nah. he's, he's bang on. I think you're going to end up in the, in the Premier League. Well, the good thing as well, we've played you now. We've played Leeds home away. Now we've played Leicester home away. We've got Southampton at home, West Brom at home in the top sort of six. We've right. got a Hull and Coventry, but. We've got a lot of the big boys out of the way now, and it's like hopefully a little sort of run yeah. of games now that win a ball, get some more points, and a bit of the men are going again. Mm. Dad, top man, mate. Thanks for call. Let's go to Glenn. He's a Leicester fan. All right, Glenn. All right, Glenn. Good evening, chaps. All right, Glenn. How are you? Oh, the voice is gone. Okay. Last, last time I called in was after Cardiff away, and I was a bit of chair But But uh, no, I, I, I wasn't going to call, but that segment with uh, Bit of Brian, I had to call in and apologise on behalf of every other Leicester fan in the ground. Um, it drives me mad that I heard people moaning at the end when we walked away about Vestergaard and playing out from the back and what have you. But it's the style that we set up. Vestergaard has almost been our quarterback for the entire season. And the reason that we do so well and the reason we're top of the league is because he just dictates everything we do. Yeah. And, it, 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 yeah. and then when I we feel, have going, Glenn, I feel oh, like I'm oh. interviewing Sean Dyche right now. <laughs> oh, I feel you. like it, mate. <laughs> I feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's uncanny. I don't know. It, we, it, we're all in full voices tonight, but yeah, it's gone. Can you can you talk, can you do like talk about Everton for a minute? Go on, just just talk about right, Everton. Just, yeah, I'm not particularly happy with the points deduction, but we get on with it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's good work. Do you want to speak to Brian, Glenn? No, I'd rather not. I'll just get you. On. You want to speak to him? <laughs> he, he might be out reason with him. Do you know what? I heard three or four of the people just like Brian outside the ground saying the same things. It drives me insane. Listen, it's a bit of a concern that I think we've dropped 11 points in the last five or six minutes of the games this season. Right. But seven points clear and walk in the league, put the champagne on us, get on with it. Yeah. 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 Resolute all season, I think, you know, the way the players are going about it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's very good. Oh, very good. Glenn, top man, mate. Thanks for your call. Cheers, Glenn. Uh, let's get Danny. Can we get Danny a Leicester fan on? Is Dan there? Danny boy? Who's Danny boy? Danny boy, here he is. Hello. Hello, Dan. How you doing, guys? You all right? I'm all right, mate. Uh, I've, look, I, me, and, me and Jace obviously watched the game. I thought he dominated, really. He should have put the game to bed. 
we should have, but we've got to give credit uh, to Ipswich because not only that, they've done that like, we've had a draw a man away. And I've got to agree what Glenn just said then a minute ago. I don't know why people are just... Yeah, the, the only thing that I could take that Clark should have been sent off for that challenge on Jewsbury Hall. Mm. It weren't good. Uh, because if you remember a few weeks back or the other week, um, Fatua did the same and got and sent off straight away. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. I have to say, it's a bit of an ugly old tackle. That one. It's it's definitely borderline. And if if you had VAR, maybe VAR would would mm. would, would step in. But it's it was definitely borderline. So much better though, isn't it? When I watch Championship games and there's like decisions, you just go, oh yeah, you get on with it. Yeah, it's borderline. Yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe. Suck up. Yeah, move yeah, on. Yeah. And you just move on from it. You know, you haven't got to have the whole discussion a five minute wait on the you know them well, talking about it. Well, that's what happens, like. So now that Forrest know they can write a letter to Pogmo. And complain about that. You won't. You won't get that. Less, Leicester won't start complaining. You know, Forrest. Of, you know, right in the Pogmo. And, oh, oh, Tony picked the ball up, and moved it. You know, you're you're Ooh. hammering. You're hammering. No, I just think it's pathetic, mate. It's not just them. Any club that writes. Yeah. The Sports Bar with Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy, Monday to Thursday nights from ten on AM on DAB via the Talksport app and on your smart speaker. Talksport.